Oh, the 4th of July, one of my favorite food holidays. Hot dogs, hamburgers, potato salad, turtle soup. Wait, what was that last one? Turtle soup, poached Atlantic salmon and egg sauce, green peas, and new potatoes and jackets. That is what tradition says Abigail Adams served to John Adams on that first 4th of July in 1776. It's bollocks, of course, because they weren't even in the same colony, let alone the same city, but you know, somehow the tradition stuck, and for years afterwards, in New England, that's how people celebrated the 4th of July, with that meal. So while I have no desire at this juncture to make turtle soup, I am going to show you how to make the second course, the poached Atlantic salmon in egg sauce, using an 18th century recipe. Then we'll take a look at how, according to John Adams, we're all celebrating this holiday completely wrong. This time on Tasting History. So this dish has two parts. The salmon, basically the same in most of the 18th century recipes that I found, are very, very similar. But the egg sauce is quite a different story. I found several recipes, both American and English, but I figured since Abigail Adams was our second first lady, we should go with the recipe from our first first lady, Martha Washington. The Martha Washington Cookbook, a compendium of cookery and reliable recipes. Now, it wasn't actually published until 1892, but it's ostensibly based on recipes from the kitchens of Martha Washington. So for our intents and purposes, I think these recipes will work just fine. So once you hit that like button, I'll wait. We'll get right down to it. Egg sauce. Make a drawn butter. Chop two hard boiled eggs quite fine, the white and the yolk separately, and stir it into the sauce before serving. This is used for boiled fish or vegetables. Drawn butter and eggs. How easy is that? Easiest recipe ever, right? Ah. I was naive. As soon as my eyes scanned up the page, it was like when Samuel L. Jackson's character tries to open Dennis Nedry's computer. Uh, 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 uh. Because just above the egg sauce is the recipe for the drawn butter that we're supposed to use, and it's a little more complicated than modern drawn butter. To make drawn butter, put a half pint of milk in a perfectly clean stew pan and set it over a moderate fire. Put into a pint bowl a heaping tablespoon of wheat flour, quarter of a pound of sweet butter, and a salt spoon of salt. Work these well with the back of a spoon, then pour into it, stirring it all the time, half a pint of boiling water. When it is smooth, stir it into the boiling milk, let it simmer for five minutes or more, and it is done. Drawn butter made after this recipe will be found to be most excellent. It may be less rich by using less butter. Less butter, you say? <laughs> tut tut, my dear, tut tut. We do not use less butter on this show. So for the egg sauce, here are the ingredients you'll need. Two hard-boiled eggs. One cup or 240 milliliters of whole milk. A heaping teaspoon of flour. One stick or 113 grams of softened butter. A half teaspoon of salt. And one cup of boiling water. So add the milk to a small saucepan and then set it over medium heat so you don't scorch it. Then, in a small bowl, add the flour, the butter, and the salt, and mix together with the back of the spoon, just like the recipe says. As things come together, slowly add the boiling water while continuing to stir. Once the mixture is nice and smooth, pour it into the simmering milk and let it simmer for about five minutes. Now, if you're not noticing the sauce thicken much, and it's not going to thicken a lot, but it, it should start to thicken a, a bit, um, it's a hard word to say over and over, thicken, thicken, thickening. Uh, just add a little bit more flour in there and that'll kind of get the process started. Now, as that thickens and simmers, let's take a look at why we are celebrating the 4th of July all wrong. Resolved that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. Now that was the resolution that was introduced to the Second Continental Congress by Virginian Richard Henry Lee on June 7th, 1776. Four days later, the Committee of Five, which was John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman, was established to draft what would become the Declaration of Independence. Now, if you have never seen or heard the musical 1776, get thee to 
wherever you can listen or see 1776 because it's such a fun show. And there is a great song in, in it where the Committee of Five meets together to decide who's going to do the bulk of the writing. And John Adams is the first to do it because it's kind of his baby, but he is disliked and obnoxious and seen as a know-it-all. So he's like, I'm not gonna do it because then everyone will, will hate it because I did it. So he pesters all the others to do it and they all have excuses. I had a baby just born or I'm bad at grammar, yada, yada, yada. And finally it lands in the lap of Thomas Jefferson because in John Adams' own words, Jefferson had a happy talent for composition and singular felicity of expression. Don't you just love how people used to talk back then? I feel so dumb when I read old letters. Now, as famous as Thomas Jefferson's document would become, it was actually Richard Henry Lee's proposal that needed to be voted on and was passed on July 2nd by 12 of the 13 colonies because even in 1776, New York just could not get it together. I love New York, used to live there, but we all know what I'm talking about. The next day, July 3rd, John Adams wrote to Abigail Adams because she was in a different city and colony, which is how we know that she didn't make a dinner the next night. And it said, the second day of July, 1776 will be the most memorable epic in the history of America. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other, from this time forward, forevermore. Rousing. But what a weird way to write to your wife. Kind of impersonal. I can see why people maybe didn't like him. He was always on. Anyway, Adams was pretty spot on when he uh, described how the holiday would be celebrated in the future, but he got one key detail wrong, the date. Because even though it was passed on July 2nd, it took two more days of arguing for people to decide on the wording of the Declaration of Independence, which was the public message. And even then, they actually didn't get around to signing the thing until a month later, and even then, it trickled in, like it happened over the period of four months. So the next year, on July 4th, 1777, the city of Philadelphia held the first annual commemoration of independence, irking John Adams to no end. The following year, General Washington celebrated the holiday by giving his troops double rations and a 13-gun salute. And in 1781, the state of Massachusetts, John Adams' own home state, was the first to declare July 4th a state holiday. That has got to hurt. And it's said that for the rest of his life, whenever John Adams was invited to a celebration of the 4th of July, ever the bitter Betty, he would decline. Now the real nail in the coffin, so to speak, happened in 1826, when at the age of 90, John Adams died on the 4th of July. His last words were, Thomas Jefferson still survives. He didn't know that five hours earlier, Thomas Jefferson had also died. True patriots. And speaking of words that sound like patriots, I just started a Patreon. That was a terrible segue, and I apologize to Washington, Jefferson, everyone, Adams, but um, there it is. Anyway, if you want to support this channel, I have a link below to my Patreon page. Now let's get back to the food, shall we? As your drawn butter finishes thickening, go ahead and chop your hard-boiled eggs into small pieces and then toss them in the pot. Give everything another minute or so to thicken up and then take it off the heat or turn the heat to incredibly low while you cook your salmon. Really, the best thing would be to synchronize everything so it's all done at the same time, but it's kind of hard and frankly, I only have one camera so I can't do more than one thing at the same time. Now, in the same Martha Washington cookbook, there is a recipe for boiled salmon, which, due to the rather limited culinary lexicon of the 18th century, we will consider the same as poached salmon, and you'll see why. Boiled salmon. The middle slice of salmon is the best. Sew it up neatly in a mosquito net bag, and boil a quarter of an hour to the pound in hot salted water. When done, unwrap with care and lay upon a hot dish, taking care not to break it. Garnish with parsley and sliced eggs. So now you can tell that the word boil probably means something closer to um, poaching or simmering because 
If you, even a pound of salmon, if you boil that for 15 minutes, it's gonna be so tough and gross. And George Washington had false teeth and I don't think he could bite into that. Now, another interesting thing about this recipe is that it says to use a mosquito net bag. I don't exactly know why. I mean, I've heard of wrapping salmon uh, and cooking it in either aluminum foil or parchment, but never a porous bag. Um, but I wanted to give it a shot. So I actually got one of these uh, little bags that's actually made for making almond milk. Um, I'll put a link in the description because one, all the mosquito netting that I could find was like enough to cover a bed. And two, uh, it, it was all made of like polyurethane and stuff. And I was worried I was gonna poison myself. So these are made out of cotton, um, which I, I think is safe. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So for this salmon recipe, all you need is some salmon. I'm gonna do two pieces because I wanna try one with the bag and one without, and then water with salt in it. So mix the salt into the water and place it on low heat until you get the barest of simmers. You want this to be about 175 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 80 degrees Celsius. It's really important to keep it kind of in this range. Otherwise, you're, you're gonna overcook your salmon. I'm just telling you right now. Um, so a, a great way to, to be able to tell this is one, don't let it boil, because then you've obviously gone over the amount. And two, if you've got a candy thermometer, this is a great time to use it. So if you're going to use a bag like the recipe suggests, slip the fish into the bag now and put it into the water. Now the length of time that the fish is going to spend in the water is going to depend on the size of the filet. Uh, the recipe says 15 minutes to the pound. My fish was not a pound. Uh, I'm just one person, so I don't need that much salmon. But you can tell when the fish is done. If you take it out and you stick the tip of a knife in and pull it out, if the tip is warm, it's done. If the tip is cold, put it back in the water. Then as soon as your salmon is done, take it out, put it on a warm plate, and pour your egg sauce over the top. Then add a touch of parsley for a bit of sophistication, and if you have a founding father around, now is the time to serve it to him. If you don't, then you get to eat it yourself. Lucky you. So here is our poached salmon with egg sauce. Now I'm gonna take a bite of each of the salmon because I wanna see, did that bag do anything, or is it just nice to be able to help take it out of the water. So this is the first salmon in the bag, in the bag, get some sauce and some egg on there. Mmm, mmm, it is soft and flaky and wonderful. The salmon is wonderful. And then the sauce, it reminds me, it reminds me of Hollandaise, but much lighter. Not as creamy, um, but it has that kind of it has a little bit of that flavor. I do think, and maybe in the future they figured this out, a little, a little spice of some sort uh, might help, or or an herb like tarragon or or um, chervil or something, something. Um, parsley, and this is Italian parsley that I use, but parsley doesn't have, partake, give much of a f flavor to me. Now here is the second salmon that was uh, done without the bag. Interesting. The flavor is, is pretty much the same, but it's a little more well done. And I was very, very careful to watch the, the temperatures, so maybe the bag actually did something. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way, it's delicious and definitely a meal fit for a founding father. Now, after your salmon, you're gonna probably want some dessert, so might I suggest 18th century everlasting syllabub. I will put a video, uh, or it'll be down here in the corner. It'll just come up as the next video. So I'll see you over there, or I'll see you next time on Tasting History.